A warm and cordial welcome, Dominika Kavalerovic, and I am part of the European Capital of Culture, the office, the main office. This is an important moment. This is a summary, summing up of the European Capital of Culture, working two years, and there are people who have been a great support to us over these two years, the Mayor of Wrocław, Mr. Rafał Dudkiewicz, and his excellent uh, the Chancellor and President of the University of Wrocław, uh, Professor Adam Jezierski, Deputy Dean, uh, who Students Affair, uh, Dr. Uh, Patricia Matusz Protasiewicz, that would be Social Department, mm, and uh, Mr. Krzysztof May and uh, Ms. Olga Nowakowska from the Directorship of the European Capital of Culture and the Evaluation Team, as well as all the distinguished guests and the members of the program uh, board, um, Dr. Jacek Puta and Katarzyna Kajdanek. So uh, the floor uh, would be for the host of um, Barbara. Mm. Now, the mic has not been on. Um, we've been uh, eight years into, since, since uh, well, in two months, we'll, be, we'll have been to uh, yes, uh, since the City Council decided on applying for the uh, sit, um, for the European um, Capital of Culture, and um, may I just thank again uh, to our evaluators. Uh, we've become friendly with them, and Barbara has been the place of encounters and a meeting where there were no um, uh, pastry. Um, custard pastry. Um, we were a bit disappointed and I would buy them um, myself. Mm, so it's really a pleasure to listen to the results of their evaluation and their assessment, the residents, the city, and we um, availed ourselves of the results of the, of the survey over the year of um, the, that year of the European culture. We wanted to hear the artists and developments and how they see the development because we wanted things to be adjusted, modified and improved. Now, further surveys uh, showed that any intervention would be beneficial. Jacek uh, has already mentioned that uh, we should be opening the conference within so-called uh, academic quarter because all the lecturers appear to commune. I think the year was very good year. Um, Mr. Jodak is not with us, but he, he uh, in Poland, across Poland, people are impressed with the project and the research methods, results, the output. So have a very fruitful debate, and I hope we Friday will see us all very pleased. Mr. Rafał Dudkiewicz, the mayor of Wrocław, the actual head of the European capital of Wrocław and who's commissioned the survey itself. Your Excellence, thank you very much uh, for the university's uh, commitment and involvement into the project, the business of assessment. Uh, there was a great wisdom of um, Minister Secretary Zdrojewski. Jurek Hausner wanted to launch the project, but the minister uh, declined his application, and then he finally declined the application for the minister declined the application of uh, for for the survey. Thank you very much, the survey team. Krzysztof said it wasn't too bad, and um, that's true. That's a fact that we once agreed that we'll be applying for the European. Um, a European Capital of Culture, and then, uh, well, that was all about the project, obviously, but also enthusiasm and some positive energy for the city to inspire the city. So I think we've been successful. Thank you very much, and I'm back to my seat. Uh, Your Excellence, the floor is yours now. Oh, well. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, distinguished 
Assembly. Thank you very much for this opportunity of having worked together. It's been crucial. It's not only that Minister Govin said something about the um, liaisons with uh, the academia and its environment is as important as scoring points for our efforts. We've been in the business for quite a while and didn't need any extra guidance. But it's just because we have excellent staff. Excellent staff, hands-on, and uh, well, I come over and everything is ready. Everything um, has been fixed, and then uh, you're ready to receive um, all tokens of appreciation. So again, thank you very much for working together. Mm, I'm quite impressed uh, with what happened in Krakow. Uh, I mean, impressed uh, with. Uh, uh, the speech of the Prime Minister and uh, he mentioned the sort of scoring disease. There are no points to be scored for what we've done. It's not so much that it counts, so much as it counts that we work, we've worked together. The Prime Minister advised fighting scoring down. We should be assessing events and achievements, evaluating achievements. And obviously we had uh, various commentaries and different speeches in, about translating and converting certain achievements into, into um, um, some quantitative presentations. So there's no, nothing more beautiful than, than working together and joint efforts. The, the fact that we've been given this opportunity in the European uh, capital of culture, it makes me uh, shiver. I don't like um, closing things. I, let's, let's look at it as a new opening. We need to be working together, and this is the purpose of, uh, of the academia, of the universe. It's just, just because uh, the authorities say so. Ad Vulcan. We are not closing uh, anything. Uh, Your Excellence has just been ahead of us. Uh, the conference uh, summer is uh, summing up the European uh, capital of culture. Uh, we are transforming uh, and all the good achievements that, uh, well, it's, it's a summary, but it's also a new beginning. Uh, what you've just said, Your Excellence, the scoring uh, disease, uh, we've already had um, a talk with uh, the Vice Chancellor, with you as still as Vice Chancellor, and then you've been promoted to the function, to the role of Chancellor, so you come when things are ready. Thank you very much, Your Excellence. Uh, Deputy Dean of the Faculty of Social Science. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the kind invitation. In Poland, the um, evaluation and assessment surveys are still, in a way, underestimated. Um, it's important to run surveys concerning uh, local policy and the management, and I'm really proud, um, having done it with my team in my department. I believe it's going to be a, a kickoff, a good starting point um, with lessons learned during the European um, Capital of culture. Um, I'm Professor Kaidanek, Dr. Pluta is the front people of the project. I'm so pleased with them. The great value of, of today, of the days that we live, um, it, it, the value of itself is the cooperation among various universities and the colleges. I think we live, and it was all diverse, and I think believe that we should stress this cooperation. You can use our results. You're welcome to do that. And uh, let's take seats and hand over to Jacek, um, uh, Dr. Jacek Pluta on behalf of the whole team. Now, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, I've stressed and I I've been slightly embarrassed. Uh, before uh, I hand the microphone over to Kasia. Um, I feel a bit intimidated because I feel like an Oscar gala. Um, the 
survey team included maybe a dozen people between 10 and 20, and you will find their names as the writers of various reports. We also issued a book, published a book, and we've also made an effort to translate these reports or make them available in the English language. It's something to be uh, remembered and emphasized. Uh, in addition to Kasia, Mateusz, Natalia, myself, Camila, oh gosh, I, the list is longer than that, and um, I probably am not able to do that now. But that was uh, like the memoir found in Saragossa, the um, novel, this box in a box. Uh, it was um, a new opening and a new screen. I think. What I value is that uh, we were really working together. We were supported by people stand next to us with a hand. Uh, well, my feelings are slightly mixed, but on one hand, uh, we are, we've learned something. On the other hand, we are slightly tired and exhausted. And uh, quite smoothly, we are passing on to the scientific academic part of the conference, having thanked everyone for everything. I may only invite uh, the three next speakers, Professor Svitlana Ovchenko, Dr. Michał Cebula, and Dr. Niedźwiecka Iwańczak. Are everyone here, each of our speakers, and Professor Ovtarenko, the floor is yours, your first speech, Public Cultural Policy and Cultural Symbolism of the City. It is in English. Uh, if you wish to um, get headphones in order to follow in Polish, you're welcome. You may pick it up from our uh, voluntary team. Uh, again, thank you very much. Our guests, thank you very much. Three days of debate debate. You can also watch us in stream, uh, is streaming in, on, um, via the website. Hello. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to participate in this conference and the honor to speak with the first report at this conference. I understand that this is a big responsibility and I will try to cope with this honorable mission. I also want to wish, wish us all the pleasure and fruitful work. I hope to continue to communicate with all the participants of the conference after its completion, cooperation in scientific research and cultural projects. Establishing ties in the spirit of cultural diplomacy is important for Ukraine, my city, and for me personally. I also thank, um, I also thank the organizers for the opportunity to personally get acquainted with the cultural achievements of Wroclaw and uh, the Sincer's hospitality. Uh, so, uh, at present the topic uh, that I proposed uh, for our conference is very crucial for Ukraine, even painful, because my country is uh, fighting for a modern cultural identity and rethinking their symbolic cults. Uh, Ukraine gradually emerged from the cultural situation, which is unofficially called the murder of cities, and which embodied the policy of living diversity in the times of the Soviet Union. But these complex, irrational events, which are neither purely political nor economic, are very different, difficult uh, to comprehend by policy, policy makers. However, I understand that Ukraine solves not only its own specific problems, but also plunges into the cultural development of Europe as an integral part of it. I built my presentation on the generalized theoretical position of the philosophy of culture on the experience of life in the city with rather interesting and extraordinary cultural processes 
and on the analysis of problems of management practice in the field of culture, which are relevant for modern Ukraine. Due to the limited time of the, my speech, I will not cite specific examples for explain my topic, but I am ready to argue my theoretical generalizations when answering questions if they will be in audience. I ask you to expect my speech as an ex expert personal expression, which is typical for humanitarian knowledge in general. However, in my report, I put probably more questions than can offer definitive answers. But I believe it is my professional duty to formulate questions that promote thinking. Let me define the general attitude to the theoretical definition of culture and symbolism in culture, because it determined outline my general philosophical approaches. Thus, culture is process and a multi-layer phenomenon. Uh, we can observe in the culture the processes of differentiation and integration, processes of replication and innovations, processes of radical change of organizational forms of production of cultural events and phenomena. In fact, we are now, in this moment, at hub of fundamental change that requires us intellectual tensions and the ability to ask questions of a philosophical nature regarding the meaning of cultural change. Uh, for if we don't understand the semantic orientation of processes, uh, then we cannot um, adequately apply the theoretical knowledge of culture as social phenomenon. This caveat is important because we are able to strongly influence the cultural processes based on modern knowledge. Unfortunately, so far, mostly for the words we call hybrid. But I hope that we will learn to use our knowledge for sake of peace. The meaning of the symbolis, symbols in the culture is carefully investigated, starting with the classic works of the Ernst Cassir. And I will not be able to add something fundamentally new to these ideas. I only want to clearly state my position. I will impress the symbolism as a unity of events and emotions. And in fact, this emotion component is my understanding, uh, is crucial for the formation of the meaning of the symbol. Dedication into the secret of symbolic emotion is an involvement uh, to read the meaning of symbol. Uh, that is why I have emphasized that I will use my own experience of emotional perception of cultural events, which I will try to describe. Uh, therefore, I propose to understand the symbolism of the city as a certain emotion code that occurs when a holistic image of the city are achieved. Such a simple formula of the symbolism of the city is theoretically correct, but in practice, everything is much more complicated. For me, it is obvio obvious uh, that we have no answer some questions related to the same holistic image of the city. For example, what are components of the holistic image of the city? How these, does it arise and uh, does it really exist? Implicitly, in the notion of symbolic city is the idea of the ununiqueness of each city. However, how true is such statement? And do we not deny with the a priori knowledge about the ununiqueness of the city uh, the semantic load of the very notion of city? After all, generic notion, the summarizing the uh, signs of all cities uh, should impose certain rules on an object as that wishes to be called a city. To understand the, uh, the issues of the city as an object of cultural policy, I'm urged by the need for balancing between two trends that uh, determine policy priorities, cultural development of cities in Europe. 
On the one hand, cities have always been and remain centers for the dissemination of best practices, according to the modern terminology, for the settlements of city life. And on the other hand, each city strives to be unique, to have unique characteristics, to be not only a training ground for replicating cultural achievements, but also the inventor. It is important for me to understand the trends in the development of the city because in the future I try to be correct and objective in evaluating the results of the administration efforts of public administration in my country to which we now have many complaints. In order to provide adequate guidance to public administration actors in the culture, recommendations should be made on how to harmonize universal human rights to social standards for the use of cultural services and the implementation of the core provisions of the Convention on the Pro Promotion of Diversity in Culture. So, uh, should the city be the center of standards or a place of cultural creativity? Is the city a centralized standards of dancing ground of creative lifestyles? I also suggest ask, uh, asking one more question, purely philosophical. What is the city and whether will, will it be necessary for, for us in the future? Perhaps this question seems uh, far from the topic of the symbolism of the city or simple, and even naive, naive but uh, let's summarize some of the contents of a social nature uh, that are associated with the city as a cultural phenomenon, especially since they strive to embrace its holistic image. So, the, the first tendency the first tendency is communicative informational. The city has always been a place where information was focused and where people uh, sought to get their according to information and read communication. A man in the village and a man in the city ex existed in various information and communicative worlds. Often there is simply no other way to be in the flow of everyday political, economic, scientific information uh, than to stay in a city that was a center of administrative, commercial, cultural, and educational institutions. I think uh, you can yourself provide forecast about the level of importance of the city as an exclusive communicative tell uh, based on your own experience of using computer networks. The second trend is social structural. I would like to draw your attention to the status significance, significance of housing in the city center for social uh, structuring of society. Living in the city center means being an elite, or vice versa. If you're elite, your place in the city center. I have no data specific, specific studies uh, they demonstrate this statement relate, uh, relate, um, relative to modern cities, especially cities with high touristic appeal. But uh, the uh, centrifugal tendency as tendency to increase the comfort of staying in the city is quite obvious. This trend is building, so speaking, a uh, decentralized city today and urban uh, consequences of this phenomenon we still need to understand. The third trend is historical stylistic. Cities are stylistically layered entities. We are not destroying now. We don't leave the settlement. We are living up lifestyles and practices. We change the visual image of the city. We change the practices of everyday life in the city. Of course, we can expect radical transformation of the original urban landscapes, as happened with cities with a medieval uh, or antique cultural layer. 
maybe uh, should we change the names of cities, changing the stylistic quality and quantitative indicators? These questions may seem too, provoc uh, too provocative, uh, but in my Odessa city, a problem of timing of both city and its cultural identity became public and political problem and the reason for inspiration civil conflict. Uh, the fourth trend is migration demographic. I think that this trend does not even require additional explanation. If the city is understood as a community, then in large modern cities, the identity of the community to itself in time is rather problematic. Uh, the idea of ingenuous, real townspeople who consider themselves those that are only able to save the real city, its spirit from the invasion of migrants, is equally problematic. These are main four trends uh, that I would like to call abstract because these are world cultural trends. Emphasizing this, we did not affect the complex understand, uh, interpe um, interpersonal relations, national, religious, eth ethical, and aesthetical issues of the existence of a modern city. That is, there are trends that do not affect the unique emotional components of the city's perception, not form its unique symbolism, but our general situations of development of modern cities. Uh, consideration about the symbolism of the city, in my opinion, cannot avoid discussing the problem of the origin of such symbolism since symbolism is a result of a human attitude to the city. Symbolicity of the city, which is associated with a, a psychological component of the city's perception, can be varied in time and variably personally. Symbolic of a city can develop, change, or occur other meanings. Symbolicity of the city depends on the context of the city's perception. It is also quite clearly possible to divide uh, the particular personal situational symbolism of city and city symbolism in mass consciousness. Briefly explain what I mean when I talk about personal symbolism. These are personal impressions of the city which may be related to personal emotional experience and memories, love, uh, failure of su or success, loss, or radically new life expressions. The city can be painted in especially emotions, and the city can be a personal symbol for, pe for a person. I will not dwell on the nuance opened private symbolism of the city, since it does not appeal uh, or apply to public policy in the field or of culture. Uh, more, interesting, uh, more interesting for us is the theme of the symbolism of the city, which becomes a thematic mediator in the perception of the city or a stable association uh, with the mentioned cities in the mass consciousness. I want to highlight a few issues that arise in this regard. What is the source of the city's symbolism? Who and how does the symbolism of the city form? How is a symbolistic stereotype uh, of the city reproduced? Is there a possible non-contradictory uh, contradictory symbolization of the city? What is a formal material carrier of the symbolism of the city? Uh, recall that we have noted problematic existence of a holistic image of the city, especially city that develops over time and has complex history of cultural creations. It is with the interpretation of the holistic image of the city, all problematic issues of symbolism of the city in the mass consciousness are connected. So let's look at the sources of the formations of the symbolism of the city. Of course, 
The first thing uh, that comes to mind is uh, unique architectural ensembles, but uh, does this create uh, the symbolism of the city with it interpreted as spirit of the city? The fact is that European cities have almost the same styles of building in according with the development of architectural styles. This is what tourists say when they say in new city. I've already seen this. I'm tired from repeating. This is especially true for cities that were built or developed in the 17th, 19th centuries, including my hometown. Yes, we can name the significant uh, differences in the architecture of cities and uh, its landscapes uh, which create each recognizability, but it does not create symbolism. Symbolism of the city, also it is related uh, to architecture, but not limited to it. In addition to architecture, the city's symbols form. Biographies of prominent residents of the city that are related to administration, politics, literature, art, science, charity, educational, religious, ministry. Uh, then literary, uh, you can see this on the slide, literary description of the city, famous things and characteristics of the city. Legends about the origin of the city, typical household factors of the city, features of the language, etc. Um, features of the city economy, character of the professional list, and a historic event related to the city. Thus, the city symbolism is a rather complicated by the origins of its formation and it's very problematic in view of the thought for a holistic image of the city. To understand and study its meaning, uh, it's necessary to realize who formulates the image of the city and for what purpose. The city can gain positive and negative symbolism, political and ethnic symbolism, artistic and religious symbolism. Such symbolism depends on the context in which it forms, or from political inquiries, from the situational interest of interested social groups. Symbolicity may change over time, and it must change. Uh, otherwise, the city will be doomed to stagnation. The city may also have different symbolic meanings for different religious and ethnic groups uh, at the same time. Thus, it is clear that the non-contradictory symbolization of the city, an um, unambiguous final and executive is fundamentally not possible. Our attempts at a living city uh, which continues to evolve to impose a final symbolism should be considered um, inappropriate and, in such a sense, culturally criminal. The city symbolism is obviously dependent on cultural practices, political beliefs and aesthetic preferences at a certain time. We where the symbolistic stereotype of the city is replicated and supported is largely due to the fact when, in what circumstance, and who, from what purpose, are remember about it. In modern practice, it is for me most part a, the, a commodity of tourists or an element of political manipulation of mass consciousness, which uses appropriate channels of mass communication. Symbolism of the city, which is always aesthetic 
interpretation of past events may be used for political ends and purposes, these are not always novel. Reading the ideolo uh, um, realizing the ideolo uh, ideological component of the city's symbolization, what the state can and may do in this area? Will it not interfere in the area of civil right to self-determination, free choice of cultural beliefs and aesthetic preference? The question arises, does the system of state administration generally have to worry about the symbolism of the cities as a sphere of its responsibility? Perhaps there are more real cultural objects that require some kind of managerial influence. It should be borne in mind that the city can and must change symbolically just as it changes economically, politically, or infrastructurally. The only things that can be stated as a result of uh, comprehension of the situation with the symbolism of the city is uh, that the procedures for public administration of the cultural development of the city are quite complex and require specialists who will understand not only administrative procedures, but also have developed it aesthetic feeling and deep knowledge of the culture theory. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. I think uh, the questions and the issues, especially issues, uh, should be able at the end of this session. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, Michał Cebula, uh, wystąpienie. Uh, his contribution, Michał. The floor is yours. Michał Cebula of uh, Wrocław University will tell us something about the inhabitants in the social field, about the patterns of uh, participation in culture, about social networks and the class structure. Michał, the floor is yours. Um, good morning. Welcome cordially. Michał Cebul is my name of uh, Wrocław University, the Faculty of Sociology. I want to talk to you about the inhabitants of the city and about the so-called so social fields that the people are in. Um, the purpose of my presentation I think I, I have three goals of my presentation. The first one is uh, to attempt to look at the city from the perspective of cultural practices and uh, the practices of uh, the inhabitants. I'm going to show some patterns of participation in culture or the practices uh, of leisure, leisure time, free time, uh, the, um, uh, the people um, sort of uh, use. And uh, secondly, I want to present the city as a social field, a concept of uh, Bourdieu uh, is going to be applied uh, with a question mark, however. And thirdly, I want to share with you uh, some um, thoughts about um, the, the divisions, uh, structural divisions in uh, Wrocław uh, that will be from the point of view of structural um, class point of view, I mean the division into different uh, uh, social classes. And the basic thesis of my presentation is as follows. I assume that the city is a certain space, an arena of uh, competition of um, different uh, consumer orientations and different uh, lifestyles and the consequence of it is uh, the modeling of the space in the city according to to different characteristics of those groups. Um, uh, the city is also a place of reproduction of the social structure, accumulation of capital by realizing different uh, uh, life patterns. The theoretical background, I don't, I don't want to dwell on it, but uh, I just want to point out to the concept, uh, to the contemporary concepts uh, of the city, uh, city studies uh, accentuating uh, a new look at the so-called city creating uh, elements. Um, uh, generally, it is pointed out that the central category organizing the life in the city is the category of consumption, leisure, culture. All the rounds of those different lifestyles concentrate. Uh, they are also a certain attractor of the city, 
attracting different categories of different people. Uh, from the point of view of the city category, we also um, can talk about uh, the culture of uh, facilitating, the, the culture of facilities. Uh, so the city government uh, strives to facilitate the lives uh, of the inhabitants, consumption and lifestyles uh, are becoming a political issue. The, the uh, second uh, thought is uh, uh, the, the, the culture, I say consumption element. Culture is becoming a central element. Uh, we are living in a, a society of culture and this uh, also uh, has a certain impact on the concept of the city. The, sec the third one is the theory of Boudier, the so-called city fields, uh, social fields, uh, with a question mark, however. The, the field can be understood as a um, static uh, structural configuration, a configuration uh, which is uh, marked by the distribution of capitals, but it's, it is also a space and the stake, it is a stake in the play. Uh, the inhabitants want to manifest their lifestyles in the city space. Uh, the city is a field of consumption. The inhabitants manifest their identities. They want to uh, realize their lifestyles and as a consequence the city becomes or gets a certain character. Uh, also the ways of participation in the lifestyle of the city um, this is the question about the practices, what institutions are used by the inhabitants. Uh, this is of course limited by the resources that the inhabitants have at their disposal. So I want to show you how different types of inhabitants uh, are located in this uh, space, uh, what kinds of lifestyles they realize uh, connected with consumption and how it is combined, intertwined with different capitals. The empirical basis of my uh, considerations is a project that I did last year. I, I'm going to show you uh, in a minute. I just want to not, don't want to divert your attention because the, 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 the tension has to rise. So the basis, the base, empirical base was, uh, were questionnaires that I did uh, last year, 300 of those. It was not a representative poll, but uh, the inhabitants were selected, the inhabitants of Wrocław were selected according to the professional criterion, just to keep uh, a certain um, uh, diversification of the social position. I want to show you the uh, results about the practices, the practices of the inhabitants. They have been divided uh, as a result of multidimensional analysis into six different lifestyles. They are uh, they are filled uh, with uh, specific practices. There is the cultural style, leisure style, touristic style, uh, recreational style, uh, like communal style and mass style. These are characterized by a certain group of practices. The cultural style is quite a traditional one. Uh, these are practices uh, involving participation in culture, in institutions. The uh, gastronomy and leisure style is like uh, eating in food truck uh, in uh, fashionable uh, restaurants. The touristic style is not a city style really, because this is uh, about uh, uh, escaping the city. Recreational style is walking around, uh, going uh, shopping, the communal style is uh, attending masses, uh, going to church, uh, uh, gardening and not watching uh, films on DVD or computer. Mass style is mass events but also watching television. Another step was um, based on, on the consumption styles, I defined different types of inhabitants or segments of inhabitants and those were four those uh, backward, let's say, withdrawn uh, cultural ones, walkers and restaurant enthusiasts. So the values presented here in the table show in as much the given segment of the consumers realizes the given style of consumption. What is, what is the distinctive feature? Those withdrawn are withdrawn culturally, but the only th feature of those a positive one is the community related style. Those cultural, of course, they are involved in culture but also to some degree 
uh, they are sort of related to the community style. The walkers, they are involved in the t in tourism. They walk around, and the the city enthusiasts they like eating out, going to this this coast, going to pubs, cafes, and so on. The mass style uh, is also something that you could ascribe to them. Well, what can you say about those uh, segments of inhabitants? They differ in age. Uh, those withdrawn are the oldest category. The relatively youngest are those uh, gastro-enthusiasts. This can be drawn as a conclusion based on the practices themselves. Another thing is how the types of the consumers are situated in the class space. I sort of... Uh, distinguish here three classes, three social classes, A, B, and C, and we can see that certain categories of the consumers are situated or they are connected with the class structure. A is uh, higher management uh, staff professionals, B is office workers, administration, and C is the working class, you could say, or the, 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 the blue colors. The cultural ones uh, are more often uh, encountered in class A and those withdrawn in class C. The walkers are in class A and B, gastro enthusiasts. It cannot be really discerned. They are all over the place, so to say, in each category. So let us uh, um, try to, 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 to characterize uh, those groups. Uh, so first of all is the stratification char characteristic, let's say. Uh, the withdrawn uh, differ from the cultural ones uh, in terms of their status and the financial situation. They are, those two are opposed poles. Education, in terms of education and capital, family, uh, this involves the education of uh, parents. Here we have a division between the walkers, so th these are the distinctive ones. Um, uh, a paradox is, however, that they participate in the institutional culture and they are a little bit poorer uh, educated, let's say. In terms of the social capital, let me point out to, or maybe we should stop here and dwell. Uh, there are different indicators that can be used to characterize uh, the in heaven. The blue one is the number of contacts measured by the so-called position generator. This indicator gives you the insight uh, into how much, how, how good we know the given professional position. We can indicate out of the list of 14 professions how many people the given person knows with the given education. A lawyer, local politician, a scientist, uh, and so on. So this was a measure of the access to resources. So you can see here that those uh, withdrawn and the cultural one, ones differ. Then the second parameter, parameter is the uh, uh, difference in networks, let's say. So do we know somebody else who uh, is at a, in a different age, uh, has different values? So the walkers are distinct here. Um, membership in organizations, this is the third one. And this is the distinctive feature of the cultural ones, so they know the most person, the, the most number of uh, persons from different uh, professional groups, uh, social groups, and they are best organized in terms of the cultural zone. And the uh, fourth indicator is the number of members of the family that you have contacts with. So the pro-family ones were the walkers. And the two last uh, indicators, I will focus uh, on the neighborhood bond. Uh, this is uh, the best represented in the withdrawn group. Uh, they are withdrawn from many cultural practices. However, they have a very uh, solid position in terms of the neighborhood contacts. To sum up what I just said, um, I would like to present a typology. The withdrawn ones have strong uh, relationships uh, with the neighbors. They create certain enclaves uh, of communities. The neighborhood is uh, a community that they sort of base their identities on and uh, the cultural ones uh, are the opposite. They have a 
huge uh, social capital, professional capital measured by the generator of the position and the organizational one also measured by the membership in organizations. The, the walkers are those that have very different networks. Uh, uh, they have friends and colleagues that they, they differ among themselves and uh, there is a diversified network of contacts uh, and however the density of the networks is uh, rather limited that means the, the the friends of the friends do not know each other necessarily so these are specialized contacts specialized circle, circles of uh, friends uh, the gastro enthusiasts are just the opposite those eating out and they are very active in in the a field of uh, out of family relations, uh, circles of friends, but they know among each other. They have very dense networks uh, as opposed to the walkers and uh, they differ the least. I mean they have a very dense circle of friends and it is an impulse to participate in a certain formula of the city. So we can actually go on and to simplify it by showing that uh, the withdrawn ones hide away, so to say, in the private zone, the cultural ones go out, they are visible, they are present, they belong to social organizations. The walkers and the gastro enthusiasts, they differ in the degree of the openness of their networks. Uh, the, here you have uh, the, 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 the more open networks and here the, the, the more closer ones. Right, uh, I'm coming to an end and I want to Note uh, that uh, the, the types of uh, <coughs> uh, um, <coughs> of uh, the categories differ in what uh, they delight in. Uh, they have uh, certain uh, programs that they preferably watch. They have different uh, types of clothing. So these are relative uh, differences, I would say. Like for if you take the dishes, the withdrawn would go for standard dishes standard ways of uh, uh, hosting friends. These are like uh, uh, standard uh, cuisine. The, 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 the walkers uh, serve uh, exotic oriental dishes, uh, fashionable and healthy. To sum up, we can say that the, the lifestyles in the city, the city lifestyles, are different in terms of classes and uh, uh, stratum. What kinds of practices you take on in the city depends on your capital that you have at your disposal. The lifestyles and the styles of consumption are intertwined because uh, they, they, they are connected with the accumulation of certain privileges and uh, with the restoration of certain inequalities. Looking at the city system, looking at the system of uh, opportunities in the city, we can say that this is modeled for given categories of inhabitants, for the category of inhabitants who dominate in the given space, who have the most resources. Uh, at the same time, the way how we are participating in the life of the city depends on how the social bonds are shaped. Uh, the social capital of the networks differs depending, I mean, involving the social uh, open public zone, private zone, the openness of the network, the closeness of the uh, network. Uh, um, uh, another th comment, uh, just for your interest, which is not statistically based, uh, uh, how different the networks are depends on how widely we participate in different practices offered by the city that we can perform the so-called omnivorism. The bigger the networks, the more different the networks, the more oriented towards the relations outside of the family, the better, the, the wider we participate in the free time practices. And the conclusion would be that the city consumers differ in their preferences in other uh, areas of consumption. And what follows is that the, li that the lifestyles uh, realized in the city are also lifestyles that are complex. It's about not only participating in the city 
um, space, but also in the whole culture, in the culture as a whole. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much for being on time. Um, back to my chairperson's seat and may I invite um, Dr. Natalia Nitzitska Ivanchak and uh, she's about a micro grant ESK 2016 um, and broadening of participation in culture. She uh, was also part of our evaluation process um, in uh, liaising with uh, Kamila Dolinska and uh, um, Ms. Kaita. Well, thank you very much um, for the introduction and um, an opportunity to take part in the um, assessment of the micro grants. Now, looking at the title, I'll be focusing on the category of a culture. Camila Dolinska will be talking about the, the actual participation, um, about the program. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard about it, it was all about getting the um, local community of Wrocław into uh, the European capital of culture, and those active ones should become participants of the program contribution and part of it um, within the framework of uh, the European Capital of Culture was the uh, spaces of the beauty. We've been doing that since 2014 and uh, in, there were probably uh, the greatest number of applications for grants uh, for the sort of extra funds in order to, for improvements. And uh, Camila Dolinska and I, uh, we were assessing the special issue of this launch um, uh, that was a special edition uh, with 37 projects um, applied for. Uh, now, who were the applicants? Individuals, physical persons, no special competence, no background or support from an institution was required. The grant was, uh, the co-funding was 5,000, but they, all the projects uh, were successfully implemented. Now, in my speech, I'd like to talk about the culture, the culture um, in the understanding of the participants. As Camilla said, we want to extend the number of people. I uh, was excited to listen to Michal Cebula's uh, presentation because it's all about the residents taking part, regardless of where they are in the social structure. The culture um, is defined in a very broad sense, should we say anthropological sense, and the rules of the, this competition were very mm, clear, so there were the sort of animation, social activation, education, and via art with all the measures available uh, to, mm, the, the, mm, to the supplier, shall we say. It was all the beauty, the beauty of the space. Uh, so the beauty was not defined in the rules what forms or which forms of activity uh, occurred. Workshops, in the first place workshops, and I base my report on records to rather limited extent uh, Camila's uh, quantitative research uh, has contributed. We've got uh, this additional effect uh, post-processing effect. It was not only new skills of the workshop members, there were also some outcomes, uh, tangible outcomes like films, for example. Um, we wanted to broaden the group of recipients. It was not only about the participants. Then, following following the workshop was an event. The event as a combination of various activities with workshop, walk, a themed walk, city game, everything combined and um, amalgamated into one event. And 
the workshop itself as the form. So the three exhibition, um, event and workshop, the three leading forms used for the purpose of, of um, uh, the project. Now, these forms of activity can be somehow viewed in terms of the actual actor who got involved. Um, so, in some of the projects, uh, people were allowing strong participation, involvement of the recipients, such as a city game, a workshop, a workshop with an additional uh, effect, um, a themed walk. Uh, so without active participation of the recipients, such forms would not have been possible. We had 135 of such projects and another thing uh, between the, the, the actual provider and the recipient. So there was a film, a session, a photographic session, a meeting with an author, issuing a book, a video clip, a film. As we can see, um, as part of the project, we have various forms of activity. And we had a broad a range of cultural activity, as a matter of fact, designed form. Uh, there were some forms which didn't seem to fall into any specific category. Sometimes we could view them through difficult to see. Was there anything for the recipients? There were festivals. Um, or like street parties or festivals or a mobile application. In the specific applications, we could have some untypified activities. There were artistic activities interfering, intervening with the physical space, the local space. As you can see, um, the results and the outcomes, uh, the different forms, um, as you can see. So the greatest number were workshop with additional effect and events, like a themed meeting, as well as festivals, and that would be practices within the local community, very much like the events number of activities and maybe less popular forms like making a film or uh, an artistic performance. So an artist doing something for the local community. The, um, the panel uh, identified, still qualified such applications because the actual uh, participants and members of the project, like children invited for the project, uh, they were supposed to, uh, to be making a film or photographs, snapshots to be taken by the local community. So you could feel as well the participation. Now, the goals and objectives of um, the project. So animation and uh, education, um, new skills, then dissemination of uh, music, creativity, invitation to take part in an event, and maybe less popular activation around uh, history and le legacy or legis uh, inheritance also involving marginalized groups. And there was a new category, individual creativity. And that was for the application. An applicant would ask for money for publishing a volume of poems or for making a, um, a CD. So um, we can see the grassroots initiatives because uh, what was actually granted money was animation, inviting people to take part in different events. And it's not only inviting an audience, a spectator. There was a performance, a theatrical performance, um, delivered 
in private apartments, in private flats. And then at the end, uh, people were given opportunity to uh, have a small debate, discussion about the place. It's not just uh, cash, play cash money and, and leave the place. And, uh, well, the culture manifesting itself in uh, conclusions. Uh, well, uh, the initiatives were diverse and certain practical, there's a certain practical translation. Um, some activities in the old classification that would be part of high culture, like classical music concert um, or low culture, like a festival or a dancing party we can have here. And there were uh, some activities which would not be qualified as uh, cultural activity, like appearance and fitness. Uh, so we can see that culture may happen everywhere. It may be beyond an institution. Um, classical music played in, um, in a backyard on, on, the, on the estate or a um, theatrical performance in a private, um, private flat. Well, if it happens here next to us, it used to be impossible in the sacrum sphere. You can attend a concert wearing your Bermudas or shorts. You're not going to the National Forum of Music. Now, creativity is not limited to professional, um, uh, professional performance. Ordinary people are invited to create in many, many applications, in a way, way we say they, they went um, an extra mile and exceeded the expectation. And now uh, the culture generates a relationships because uh, there are various relations being created of different tension between the local communities, between the institutions, individuals, individuals and institutions and people uh, function in different spaces because it's all close, because there is no financial barrier in terms of access, hence the set of rules. Um, those activities were free of any entrance fee. Now, this culture has, must also be sort of multi-sense focus, monthly sense, and should cover a number of activities, not just a concert or just an exhibition. Everything should be combined, perhaps with a banquet or mm, showing pictures or getting more, uh, more arts into it. Um, so the event was so popular, and that's why it came out as an attractive form because of this sharing aspect. The important thing to be articulated, those applicants didn't have to define culture in their applications. Uh, we could actually draw a very broad culture based on what was going on during the European Capital of Culture. So back to uh, what uh, what culture is. Um, we may go back uh, to the definition, but if we look at what they meant by culture, participation in a workshop, my participation in a workshop can also classify as culture. If this type of culture it was manifested. This means a great success of the very program. But it's also applying for culture, being alive, enthusiastic, and uh, practical, hands-on. Dr. Dolinska will um, uh, expand on it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, 15 minutes to break. Well, I will accept questions 
inquiries, comments. Exactly. As you can see, this is true what we interpret. Yeah, Christian Potion, I used to work for Koshitse, Pilsen, and now Novi Sad 2021. I was just curious, it went a little bit fast in the presentation. Could you repeat just the figures of the number of projects uh, um, that people applied with and how much projects have been uh, supported during the three, if I well understood, it was three sessions, but it, sorry, it's very practical, but I messed that up. Uh, uh, the, within the three sessions, uh, around 400 applications were made. 405, exactly. 37 were accepted to be uh, executed. So in the last sentence, in the summary of the report, we express uh, our regret. You could think that a part of the uh, civic uh, potential has or was lost, wasted, because uh, only 30, not even 30% of the applications were performed. Uh, I will just go on with one. Did I understood well 5,000 zloty or uh, euros? 5, zloty. 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 And, and how did you manage uh, the question of, uh, I mean, usually in European capital of culture, we always face this question when we do open call for grants, we have to deal with frustration, exactly what you uh, exactly what you expressed, that you open a call, there is 400 people applying and 40 getting money? Or did you deal with the others? Because it's usually the biggest problem with open calls. <laughs> Myself and Camila, we just expressed our recommendations. The problem was that uh, in terms of organization, we could not manage because the project uh, consisted in like leading uh, uh, the people uh, and the team was only con it consisted only of three persons, and uh, those three persons could not manage more projects. And our recommendation was like this: uh, the problem was not the resources themselves, because we could have found them, but uh, the limited group of people. And there is uh, this idea: the idea is that uh, the organization of microgrants should be transferred to the local level to different institutions to to the house of culture agora, agora for example they would take over a certain number of micro grants so this is this was this would not be the central operator but uh, going down and then uh, a bigger number of um, the projects could be financed Well, you could consider whether the, the, the frustration was also expressed during the focus uh, interviews. So there was talk about 10%. So there is this falling trend of, in terms of the number of people, of natural persons applying from one session to the other. So uh, we think they are frustrated, and this was shown. People might think... This is always the same who gets the money, those who have gone already the roads and uh, our recommendation was to exclude those who participated earlier. There should be a different path for them, for those participated, participating earlier, because microgrants are, are all about... Well, you, you should say that three more sessions will be organized in 2017, so the program was not terminated in 2016. It is supposed to go on, and the problem with just a portion of the applications could be managed in this way. I would only like to add that there is a summary of the report, because the report that girls produced, it's over 100 pages long. So in the summary, in the report of the reports, which is the summary of all the reports we have written, and it's available in English, you can also read the most important information, I think also the most important recommendations uh, stemming from the, from the micro-grants uh, program. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to speak Polish. Uh, 
tell, tell the tell the lady we can translate in in German as well if okay pani Uh, the lady has established an initiative in Berlin Wrocław and she does culture exchange as a private pers person with the initiatives that, have, that I have established in the Berlin. Uh, we have a culture center, Klunke Kranich, uh, it is called so the, uh, a sort of crane. Uh, and the most important thing is that uh, the, the city and the citizens of the city themselves, according to what Dr. Michał Zawula said, they go in this direction they come together and they create something. For example, workshops for children, for adults, uh, and they do to get the micro grants like this. In Wrocław, however, since 2014, I, I am a private initiative. However, uh, I'm a sociologist as well. So I have this uh, holistic anthropological approach and I think that uh, what I uh, have brought to Wrocław is to show you don't need to go that high to the institutions. Uh, when we as citizens together, when we come together and when we offer what we have, our talents, one may be an artist, the other is art manager, the other is uh, um, an artist for children, they, the children approach you and uh, they do together like whatever they paint let's say, and then we donate. We donate, we as an initiative from, from Berlin, we donate these pieces of art. This is exactly what has happened, but without any funding, any funding support, only through cooperation, through talents coming together. Maybe this is the future for us, for our cities like Berlin and Wrocław, instead of uh, calling upon institutions and uh, being dependent on them and begging, oh, give me 5,000 what you give me 5,000 euro, what else? Why not come together like we do it in Wrocław? Uh, we do projects, we do workshops of uh, artists uh, with children together. Seniors with universities, art, music, Przepraszam, tyle tych języków. Uh, Natalie, if you could sum up. It's, I, I think it's the same assimilation and uh, integration. That's a private initiative of combining Wrocław and Berlin, uh, coming together of those two cities in, in the form of festivals of initiatives. And the question is why people, why the citizens of, of the given city do not come together to organize initiatives like this? And instead of waiting for the institutional funding of 5,000 what is like begging around and asking the institutions to create such a possibility. I'm a private person, this is quite normal for me that I do it, that we... I, I, she, she's not speaking to the mic, sorry. Uh, well, give me Give me this. Daj mi przestrzeń, ja zorganizuję warsztaty, na przykład nowe drogi plastyki i pokazuję dzieciom właśnie w formie warsztatów, razem z dziećmi, co można zrobić właśnie tutaj, w tej względzie, albo inne warsztaty dla dzieci. Pokazuję też, pokaz, pokazuję. dzieci były, miały 12 lat i były zainteresowane muzyką klasyczną, były na scenie i występowały, a więc wszystko było połączone ze sobą jako inicjatywa, jako inicjatywa ludzi, obywateli, więc nie potrzebujemy zawsze pieniędzy, a, a, ale niekiedy potrzebujemy. Ale moje pytanie dla, jest takie, dlaczego nie, nie tworzyć takich mikro, jakby czegoś takiego jak mikrogranty nie tylko dla obywateli. My jesteśmy ekspertami, oczywiście my kochamy Wrocław, jesteśmy tak bardzo 
zaangażowani w to wszystko, co pan Michał Cegbula powiedział. Kochamy historię, spacerujemy, łączymy się, wiążemy się z różnymi ludźmi. Chcemy być po prostu z obywatelami tego miasta. Dlaczego? Dlaczego nie dołączyć do tego międzynarodowych ekspertów, studentów Erasmusa? Ja nie wiem. Hmm. Jak to zrobić? Jak możemy się zbliżyć, spotkać? I think it is happening already. But it should be more. Maybe, well, uh, the institutional support is needed, however, I think. How, jak, jak to wygląda, jeśli łączym? She should speak into the mic, I'm sorry. This is a bit chaotic. <laughs> so many languages. <laughs> Jako prywatna osoba to naprawdę trudno jest, żeby spotkać się ze wszystkimi instytucjami wszystkich w mieście, nie tylko we Wrocławiu, tak samo jest w Berlinie, w Berlin, Istanbul, Berlin, Hawana, Berlin, Portugalia, zawsze tak samo było, czyli od 30 lat ja to robię, zawsze jest to to samo, ten sam problem, czyli miasta są bardzo ustrukturyzowane, tak zamknięte, takie, takie sztywne, one się nie otwierają, to wymaga jednego roku, żeby złożyć wniosek, żądanie, papiery, a więc ludzie, którzy się angażują, mają dość po roku. I'm sorry. Maybe Camilla, Camilla is just, has just noted, we are learning right now. The civic society in Poland is not so advanced such impulses like, like yours this is uh, necessary and you could see it's within the micro grants what we needed were impulses and the people now say we don't we don't need your money we will buy pizza we will buy bushes and we will put greenery upon uh, some concrete walls or whatever so th this is about the impulses uh, i want to mention the institutions uh, who are opening as a response to the initiatives of the micro grant participants uh, what emerges are hubs of activity uh, that are mentioned mentioned in literature to just to to adapt this uh, bottom up approach uh, they they come out of institutions the forgotten city for example uh, the, the, the backyards and the whole circle of public uh, is involved and also the city plays like there was uh, such play which was called like all of a sudden and some of this uh, it took place in the capital uh, musical theater in the cinema so I think the institutions are open to some degree they have to be open to some degree because what they want is public of course uh, any more questions please Sylvia <laughs> Thanks a lot. I'm, I'm Sylvia Noy from Local Operators Platform, and I would have a question to Natalia as well, also, or well, two questions, and I try to be concise. Uh, One. Uh, oh, sorry. Do you need a translation? Yeah, or? Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. So one of my questions would be whether there is a legacy for microgans. Can you can can you continue in the next years with this project? because I see it's very useful and, and very needed. And the other question would be, because I, I followed your discussion and I think it's also very important to support the citizens to organize themselves, whether you have, whether, whether you have like uh, capacity building on some kind of educational platforms for citizens to, to help them to organize themselves, not just to point them. This would be my two questions, thank you. So I'll, I'll pass the microphone to Camila Dolinska, who, were, who was a partner in the project and Była partnerem. second presentation later on. But the girls work together, so yeah. Dzień okay. dobry. Więc tak. Good morning. If if I understood you well, the micro grants are continued. Will, will be continued. There, were, there have been three sessions this year. They were not so numerous like uh, last year. However. The citizens, the inhabitants, uh, want to participate, and they take uh, on the initiative. Uh, initiatives. Uh, they they are quite often connected with the local situation of the inhabitants. They relate to their uh, uh, city uh, sections, uh, to the locations that are known to the inhabitants. In terms of uh, 
the funding in terms of the support for the inhabitants to, to be able to, to get active and to develop uh, civic competences. This year, the Micro Grant Academy worked, uh, has operated. Uh, this is here at Barbara. The participants are micro grant partners who have already conducted such a project and they share experiences, weak and strong points are discussed. However, I have not been able to participate in such a discussion, but I know they are organized and they will be organized also in the future. And this is the, the approach of the micro grant team of those three persons who are who coordinate the program and they share good practices, uh, how to help each other in order to um, to sort of uh, make uh, the civic space your own. Despite uh, very limited resources, uh, you might say, and the first impulse uh, was uh, institutional one, there is a lot of networking. They create also, they create networks between different cities and they try to, 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 to put up something together. Jakieś inne pytania, komentarze? Jedna inicjatywa, którą robimy w Berlinie od 8 lat, to schools for school soccer. So for immigrants and for citizens, the teenager guys and boys instead to be outside on the streets making trouble in the parks and drinking alcohol or something like this we inspired them and opened um, open schools i mean government schools in the night always friday night and it already won an award the bambi for integratia in berlin because the idea was like going up to the heaven every how can I say, teenager was so inspired to be not outside and having the space like schools to express themselves and with this it even started that we have contacts with the national players as the soccer players and they are supporting us and sponsoring us mm -hmm. to opening in Berlin we have right now six other schools who are participating in this and my idea as Berlin meets Rotlov was to ask if it's possible somehow to come together with this idea to create not only for boys a place even for girls because in Berlin the focus is always on boys and here I love the Miasto of Kobiets and I love the women and the girls here. They are so powerful. And to create spaces where it's not only about fashion and maquillage, it's more about holistic come together with, with art. Art of empowerment exactly. as well. To support mm -hmm. both of them, kids mm -hmm. who are interested in that. And where can I? For example, apply with that. Where can I go? Can we can we go to to micro grant? Should we go as a citizen burger who are interested to create some spaces like this to the schools? Because as I tried that, they were always like, oh no, we are urgent, we are schoolers, we can't do this, we can't allow that. But maybe with the power of you all, mm. we can create spaces mm. like that. Thank you very much for the presentations, for the discussion. Yeah. See you for the next next part.